Hey everyone, I'm Catherine from Lifehouse Church in Tokyo, and I'm so glad you are joining us for Church Online today. Wherever you are watching from, I know that God wants to encourage you and speak a word just for you this morning. So let's start with prayer. Thank you, God, that you are with us, that you want to speak to us, and we want to open up our hearts to hear what you have to say. I pray everyone watching will feel your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. So today I want to answer a question which I think many of you have asked before. I know that I've heard other people ask this question and I myself have asked this question. It's, is Christianity all about rules? So I hope this message is going to answer that for you. But let me first start off by telling you my story, a little bit about my story. I was fortunate enough to grow up in a Christian household. And so I heard uh, the message of Jesus. But my understanding about a relationship with God was that it was all about rules. I kind of had a, a different image. I thought that I needed to follow all of these rules. And if I didn't follow these rules, God would be angry or disappointed with me. And uh, he, he would leave me. And there would be serious consequences for any wrong things that I did. And of course, in my own strength, I tried to, to be a good person and do all the right things. But I... Uh, just kept missing the mark. I'm just human. I'm going to make mistakes. And I feel like I, I made lots of uh, mistakes and failures in my life. And I would think that God is angry. I'd feel such guilt and shame. And if you're going to walk down these paths in this kind of way in your life, you're going to get either to a place where you're trying to look perfect and pretend you're perfect on the outside, but inside you're really struggling or you're going to be somebody who just gives up and decides to do your own thing. And I think I went both those ways at different parts in my life because it's really hard to try and do good things that please Jesus uh, in your own strength. And so a life-changing thing happened for me a few years down the line when I was in my third year of university. Somebody invited me along to church and in that church meeting, I felt God's presence, I felt love and peace, and I heard God speak to me, a voice in my heart. God was saying, Catherine, I love you. I have a plan and a purpose for your life. And the moment God spoke to me, I realized I had it all wrong. It wasn't about following a whole bunch of rules and that God was angry with me, but God wanted a relationship with me. He saw me as his child and he wanted me to relate to him as my heavenly father. This was life changing for me. And the more that I uh, got connected with church and joined a connect group or learned how to journal and read the Bible and sat under really great healthy teaching, I realized that uh, that it's all about a relationship with God, that we um, can be in this amazing relationship with God and we're made free by the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. And this Holy Spirit can help us to live this life that God has called us to. My life has changed so much since then. I know I'm not perfect now, but the Holy Spirit has changed me from the inside. I don't want the old things anymore. I want the new ways, the new blessing ways that God has for me. And I feel such joy and freedom. So this is so encouraging and amazing. So we're currently in a series about the Holy Spirit and going through the book of Acts in the Bible and taking a look at who the Holy Spirit is and what He can do in and through our lives. So the Holy Spirit, if that sounds a bit strange to you, is just God's heart on earth. It's the presence, the power, and the person of God here on earth. And we're going to take a look at Acts 10 where a really significant moment happens that changed the way that the church and believers thought about who can have a relationship with God and how we can relate to God. It was a really significant moment. And I know it's going to encourage you today. So before Jesus ascended back to heaven, he gave instructions to the disciples and he said to them, you know, I want you to wait for the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to receive this Holy Spirit and you're going to have power to be witnesses in uh, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so the Holy Spirit had fallen upon the, the Jews. They had seen the Holy Spirit fall upon uh, Judea and the Samaritans. And now God was going to pour out His Spirit across the rest of the world on the Gentiles. So Gentile is anybody who is a, is a non-Jew person. That's the rest of the world. That's you and me. And so we pick up the story in Acts 10. 
where we meet Cornelius. Cornelius, he's a Gentile, he's a Roman centurion, and it says that he was a good man. He was always trying to do the right thing. He, he did lots of good works, and he was a searcher. He was seeking after God. He was God-fearing, and he was looking for truth. And Cornelius has this vision, and God said to him, I need you to go send some men to find a man called Peter. And Peter is going to explain to you all about me. He's going to explain what you have been searching for. And so Cornelius, he sends some people out from his households to go and find Peter because he wants to find out the truth. He's searching for the truth. And while these guys from his household are on their way to find Peter, Peter himself has a vision. He has a vision from God and God uses this vision to prepare his heart because he's about to share some good news with the Gentiles. And God wants Peter to be open to him doing something new in a new people group that Peter had never seen before. So this is a really exciting part. We pick up the story of Peter's vision in Acts 10 verse 9 to 16. It says, About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up to the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven open and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. And this happened three times and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. So this might sound like a really crazy vision, right? But you know what? God can use visions to speak to us. And God was speaking to, to Peter through this vision. And uh, a bit of background so you can understand this vision is that the Jews had many laws. These laws or commandments had been given to the Jewish people. We can read about them in the Old Testament from God. And God gave them some good instructions on how they could live this life. Some commandments you might know, right? Like do not steal, do not lie, do not commit adultery. Some really good things. Uh, God had given them these laws or commandments to follow. But he had also given them some um, other laws about how they could dress, what they could eat. They needed to be circumcised. And all of this was to show that they were set apart from the rest of the world. God wanted the world to know that his children, the Jewish people, would be different to the rest of the world. They were going to live a different kind of way, a way that would bless God, a, a blessed path that God had for them. And over time of following um, these traditions and customs, uh, religious leaders had actually added some extra customs and laws to, to Jewish laws and customs. And God was going to speak about these things uh, to Peter. So, uh, you know, we know that the law, it's really impossible in our own human strength and effort to follow the law. We can see it in, in the Bible that the Jewish people kept making mistakes, the Israelites kept making mistakes, and you and I, we know that we can try in our own efforts to follow these laws, but we always fall short. And this was always part of God's plan. He was always going to show us that the law, we cannot do it in our own strength. We cannot uh, fulfill it with our own good works, but He wanted us to see that we had a need for something greater. We would need Jesus, and we can rely on the good works of Jesus, the finished work of Jesus. Jesus, and that would be our hope for this world. That would be where we would experience victory in this area of our life. So Peter had been, he had a good Jewish guy. He'd always been following the law and he had not eaten anything impure. So in this vision, God's talking to him about eating different kinds of animals. He had never eaten certain kinds of animals because they were considered by the law to be impure. And he also couldn't go and eat or uh, sit with in the same room as Gentiles, non-believers. But God is not just speaking about food rules to him in this vision. He's saying to Peter, I'm speaking about people as well. Whoever I make clean is going to be clean. This is saying that anybody who puts their faith in Jesus will be forgiven and be part of God's plan. God wanted Peter to know that his love and his grace and his mercy, his Holy Spirit, all these amazing things wasn't just for Jewish people, but the whole world. And God really wanted Peter to get this message. He even repeated it three times. And so while Peter is thinking about this vision, um, 
he sees these three guys, Cornelius's, uh, the men from Cornelius' uh, household, and he goes to share the gospel with them. And remember, this is a really big thing that he even goes into a Gentile house to share the good news about Jesus. He's got this good message in his heart, like whoever God makes clean is clean, no matter what works they have done. And so Peter's sharing this good news about Jesus. And while he's still sharing this amazing news about Jesus, this is what happens. It's so exciting. Acts 10 verse 44, it says, while Peter Peter was still speaking these words. The Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had even been poured out on Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Wow, the Holy Spirit falls upon the Gentiles while they're listening to the message. They haven't even done anything yet. Uh, they've just heard the message and they believed in this message and the Holy Spirit falls upon them. And some of the Jewish believers, those who were circumcised, were a little bit shocked because they thought, well, you know, we expected that they're going to first have to follow all of these rules and all of these laws and all of these customs, all these things that they must wear, not wear, eat, not eat. They need to do all of these things and prove themselves first. And then maybe we can see if they can be prayed for to receive the Holy Spirit and have water baptism and have a relationship with Jesus. But uh, uh, something amazing happens here. God shows us that all of those things that is not what brings us into a relationship with Jesus that those things don't determine if we can be filled with the Holy Spirit it's all about what Jesus has done we can receive this free gift by just placing our faith and our hope in Jesus just what they like they did it says they believed the message and they received the Holy Spirit I think this is so exciting. I'm so encouraged by that. I'm so glad that I can have a relationship with Jesus, not based on, on all the rules or laws or customs or things that I can do in my own strength, but just by believing in the finished work of Jesus, believing in what He can do. And I can have this relationship. I can be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm so encouraged by this. And they were so encouraged by this too. So this is legalism, is when we try to do good works and things in our own strength and effort to earn God's favor, His forgiveness, His salvation, or the Holy Spirit. All of those things are free gifts, and we can receive them by grace through faith in Jesus. So that just means saying, Jesus, I believe in you, I trust in you, and we can receive all of these things. I love what Romans 8 encourages us in 1 to 4. It says, So now the case is closed. There no longer remains an accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus, the anointed one. For the law of the spirit of life flowing through anointing of Jesus has liberated us from the law of sin and death. For God achieved what the law was unable to accomplish because the law was limited by the weakness of human nature. Yet God sent us his son in human form to identify with a human weakness. Clothed with humanity, God's son gave his body to be a sin offering so that God could once and for all condemn the guilt and power of sin. So now every righteous requirement of the law can be fulfilled through the anointed one, that's Jesus, living his life in us. And this is my best part. And we are free to live, not according to our flesh, but by the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. That line in that scripture really stuck with me. We are free to live, not according to our flesh, our own efforts, our own human endeavors, but we can live by the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. This is so amazing. This is a life changing. I want to share a few things today with you that uh, what does this dynamic life by the Holy Spirit look like? There's so many areas in our life that change because of the power of the Holy Spirit. But here's just a few that I'd love to encourage you with this living in this dynamic Holy Spirit filled life. It says in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 16 to 18, But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had the veil removed can see and reflect the glory of God. And the Lord who is Spirit makes us more and more like Him, more and more like Jesus, as we are changed into His glorious image. So two things I want to encourage you, that we can see the work of the Holy Spirit in our life from the scripture first thing is the holy spirit brings freedom it says wherever the spirit of the lord is there is freedom freedom is the opposite of legalism right when you're trying to follow all the rules and try to be perfect and and receive everything you want from god by following the rules 
that's like bondage you feel guilt you feel shame you feel heavy that's a dark cloud but no this is the life of the holy spirit in us brings about freedom we are free to come into god's presence and to joy a relate joy a relationship with him without any obstacles even if you've had the worst day and you've said the worst things we all have days like that on your worst day if you are a child of god none of those things can stop you from boldly with confidence entering into god's presence we have that freedom isn't that so amazing we have freedom from striving we are set free to love and serve god and people this is so exciting and next thing is that the holy spirit is at work in our lives he's the one that changes us it says that we are changed into his glorious image and the word changed here is the greek word metamorpho where we get our word metamorphosis which is used right for when a caterpillar is changed into a butterfly and this is such a great illustration because it really illustrates perfectly what the holy spirit does in our life how he changes us think about the caterpillar how different the caterpillar is from the butterfly and this is what the holy spirit does he brings that incredible transformation in our life and what I love about it, it's not just the superficial outward thing. God changes us from the inside. He makes us want to live a different way. We don't want the old things anymore. We're desiring the new things. We are changed from the inside out. This is so exciting. We, we, do, we do things, we, we journal or we, we want to do the right things. We give, we serve, not because we have to, because we want to. The Holy Spirit just, it, it, it's making new desires in our heart. This is so exciting. The next thing I want to encourage us with is that the Holy Spirit brings joy. It says in Romans 14, 17, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. You know what? Legalism kills joy. You know, if you're trying to do something and follow all the rules and do it in your own human effort and striving, striving that's, that's a joy killer. And I'm sure you, you can relate to that where you've tried to please God and your own strength and you just, you feel your joy going down and you feel your guilt and your shame going up. Well, we don't want that. That's not the Holy Spirit life that we're called to live. Uh, we are called to have a joyful walk with God. It's be filled with joy. No matter what our circumstances are, we can have this joy. You know, some of the things that can also steal our joy is when we are critical of other people. That's also kind of looking at other people legalistically. We, we look at other people and say, oh, you know, they're not good enough. They're not doing all the right things. Why are they doing it like that? We become critical of them. That also steals our joy. And um, also, uh, you know, when we're striving in our own strength, that can kill our joy. So I want to ask you, do you still have joy? Do you still have joy when you see uh, new people coming to Jesus? Do you still have joy when you get the opportunity to, to serve in the dream team, to serve with your gifts? Do you still have joy when you have the opportunity to give or to sow? Uh, do you still have joy when you're reading the Word of God and when you're worshiping? Because that's a pretty good indicator of how you're doing on the inside. If you're kind of falling back into to lead legalism or work or striving or if you're living this dynamic life by the Holy Spirit because if you're living this li dynamic life by the Holy Spirit you're going to have that freedom you're going to have that joy there was a girl in my connect group uh, she came from a different country and had a different faith and uh, I was ex uh, talking to her about prayer simple prayer and in uh, her religion what her previous religion she could only pray to God in a certain language and she could only use certain words and only pray at certain times and she felt so disconnected from God she really wanted to please God but she she didn't she just felt like this kind of made such a big distance between her and God because she couldn't even really speak that specific language very well. And I was sharing with her, oh, you know what? You can pray to God in any language, whatever language you feel most comfortable with. And you can pray anytime, anywhere, and you can use simple words. God doesn't mind. Pray whatever you are feeling and thinking. And she was like, this is incredible. She had never heard such great news before. She had been kind of trying to live under all of these laws and these heavy customs. And as she heard the good news about Jesus, you could see the joy come into her life. You could see the freedom. You could see just the lift in her. She, she was seeing a new future filled with hope as she has a relationship with Jesus. This is so exciting to see. I love Paul's encouragement to us. It says in Galatians 3 verse 1 to 5, 
O oh, foolish Galatians, who has cast an evil spell on you? For the meaning of Jesus Christ's death was made as clear to you as if you'd seen a picture of his death on the cross. Let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Of course not. You received the Holy Spirit because you believed the message you heard about Christ. How foolish can you be after starting your new lives in Christ? Why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? Have you experienced so much for nothing? Surely it was not in vain, was it? I ask you again, does God give you the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you because you obey the law? Of course not. It's because you believed the message you heard about Christ. He's encouraging believers here. He's saying, you started out your journey with God, not because of your own human effort, but because of the amazing work of Jesus. And that is why you have the Holy Spirit. That's why you can, you can live this Holy Spirit life. And it says, don't go back to that old life. Don't get caught up in those ways again. No, you started this new life by the Holy Spirit, placing your faith in Jesus. Continue the journey like this in the same way. Don't go back to those old ways. Don't go, don't go under that whole legalistic works. You didn't start by human effort and you, the rest, you're going to finish this journey, not in your own, own human effort. I think it's such a, such a great encouragement for us. Start to think back to yourself. Have I slipped back into my own human efforts? Am I trying things in my own strength? Have I lost my freedom? Have I lost joy? But the good news is we can always come back to it. As soon as you notice that like some of these things are creeping back in, you, you're kind of slipping back into old ways, you know, you can just make a decision that moment. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for me. I'm coming back to joy. I'm coming back to live in this freedom that you have for me. I want the Holy Spirit to continue to work in my life and change me and make me who you've called me to be. So isn't that amazing? We can just make a decision. Every moment we kind of want to go back to that old place we can make a decision to come back to joy come back to freedom come back to this holy spirit life and so I want to pray for us today. Maybe that's you. Maybe you've started out your journey. Or maybe you're still beginning your journey. You've been following God for, for a while. I want to pray that you would continue to step into the joy and the freedom and this Holy Spirit life that God has called you to. And that you would help encourage others to live in this life that God has. So let's pray that together. Thank you, Jesus, that we can receive all these amazing gifts from you. We receive salvation. We receive the Holy Spirit, this amazing future that you have for us, not because of our own human effort and striving, not because of any laws or rules that we followed, but because we believe in you and what you have done and your good works. I pray that we won't slip back into old legalism or old destructive ways of thinking, but that we would continue to live this dynamic life by the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit. We want to come back to joy, live in the freedom that you have for us and help others to do so too. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. I'm praying this one for myself too. It's so encouraging. So maybe you are new to all of this thing about Christianity and Jesus. Well, I want to encourage you today that you can follow Jesus too. You are invited into this relationship with Him. Remember, Christianity, as we mentioned, isn't just about rules. It's about a relationship. Jesus wants to have a relationship with you. And all it takes, like we've spoken about, is just putting your faith in Jesus. Just saying, Jesus, I believe in what you did for me, that you love me, that you died on the cross for me, you took away all my sins, and that your good works are enough for me to have an eternal hope and salvation with you. And if that's you today, I would like to pray this prayer with you. Let's pray this prayer together. It's going to appear at the bottom of the screen. Jesus, I believe in you. Thank you for forgiving me. Come into my life and I will follow you. Awesome. If you pray that prayer, I'm praying for God's blessing on you. I'm praying God will continue to lead you. And why don't you let somebody know that you made that decision today so they can help and encourage you on your journey. I'm praying you have a great week ahead. Remember, we have an amazing dynamic life filled with the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit. See you next time.